District of Calcutta. Here, late in February, he boarded an American Army Air Corps plane that ferried him high across the glaciers and peaks of the Himalayas and into the heartland of China. Now he had arrived in its capital, or at least the capital of the part of the country that was still free of the Japanese invaders, and he was eager to begin his work. Joseph Needham's mission was of sufficient importance to the British government to warrant his having an armed escort. The passenger with him on the aircraft was a man named Pratt, a king's messenger who had been charged by London with making absolutely certain that Needham reached his final destination, his Britannic Majesty's embassy to the Republic of China, safe and sound. The pair began their climb up into the city. They first walked across a rickety pontoon bridge that floated on boats anchored in the fast-flowing Yangtze. They were followed by the embassy driver and a small squad of Banban men, the well-muscled porters who had slung Needham's innumerable pieces of baggage onto the thick bamboo poles they held yoked across their shoulders. The small group then began to clamber up the steps, nearly five hundred of them, the lower few rows of massive, foot-high granite sets muddy and slimy with the daily rise and fall of the river, the upper ones hot and dusty and alive with hawkers and beggars and confidence men eager to trick any newcomers panting up from the riverside. By the time they reached the top, and the lowermost of Chongqing's ziggurat of streets, Needham was perspiring heavily. It was well over 95 degrees that afternoon, and the humidity was as high as in Mississippi in July. People had warned him that Chongqing was one of the country's three great furnaces, but he knew more or less what to expect. The man who is selected to come to China, his letter of appointment had stated, must be ready for anything. The driver unlocked his jeep and began loading Needham's gear. King's messenger Pratt, his duty now complete, shook Needham by the hand, remarking gruffly that he hoped Needham would be happy in China, and that it had been a privilege to have escorted so remarkable a man. He saluted and scurried off down a side street where a car was waiting for him. Needham took a cigarette from a case in his shirt pocket, lit it, inhaled deeply, and gazed down to the river below. The scene was mesmerising. Sailing junks, salt barges and sampans made their way languidly across the immense stream, while armed patrol vessels and navy tenders pushed more urgently against the current, 